Join Midway Baptist Church for Sunday School at 945, worship service at 11, and Wednesday night service at 7. Pastor Steve and Pastor Josh invite you to join us as we seek to glorify God by building the church of tomorrow today through fervent prayer, evangelism, discipleship, and family ministry. Good morning, church. It's Pastor Josh again with another word of encouragement and exhortation from Scripture. Um, I know that it seems that things are becoming worse by the minute, but please, please remain vigilant in your walk with Christ. God is still reigning on his throne. He will always be on his throne. Nothing will knock him off. Nothing will take him by surprise. And the most important thing I think we need to be mindful of as Christians is how we represent Christ. Remember, each and every one of us is the church, and God calls us to walk in step with him. Paul says in Philippians 1, 27 through 30, Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whatever I come and see you or remain absent, I will hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, in no way alarmed by your opponents, which is a sign of destruction for them, but of salvation for you, or for you and that too from God. For to you it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, experiencing the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here to be in me. First, church, let us just be reminded, what is the gospel? Well, the gospel is the good news that even though we chose sin in disobedience to God, and God says the wages of sin is death, he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty for your sin and for my sin. You must repent of your sin and put your faith in Christ and his righteousness and you will be saved. Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Christ is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's the gospel, church, amen? And I want us to think about what it means to conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. We discuss this a lot in our youth group, in fact, and even when we're doing family Bible study at home, we discuss this a lot. Paul is speaking as a spiritual father to the Philippian church here, where he started, and, and reminding them as Christians, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we're to exemplify that in our daily lives, no matter what the circumstances are. When we say one thing, and I remind my kids of this a lot, actions speak louder than words, right? When we say one thing, but we do another, we call that hypocrisy. Now, something you may not be familiar with in regards to the Philippian church is that this group of converts were not well off. In fact, Philippi was a Roman colony where most of the retired soldiers went to live out their days. As a result, the natives, mostly Greek immigrants, would have experienced a sharp decline in not only their social status, but also their economic status. Most of the church body would have been impoverished, and as a result of their faith, they would have faced severe persecution and economic hardships. Yet Paul tells them their life, to live their life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. He knows that we as Christians, the way we live our life is an important witness for the gospel, even in distressing times, even in the face of economic hardship. This means that we're called to remain faithful to the gospel message in both word and deed. As Christians, we should always band together, but especially in times like we face today. Doing nothing out of selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regarding one another as more important than ourself. Not just looking out for your own interests, but for the interests of others. In church, as a pastor with a large family, I understand the panic, I understand the anxiety, the worry, I do. But look what Paul says next. Whether I come and see you or remain absent, I will hear of you that you, the church, are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. This is so important, church, as we are currently unable to congregate in the church building, whether we come together or remain apart for a time, that everyone hears that each one of us is standing firm in one spirit, the Spirit of God, with one mind, the mind of Christ, striving together for the faith of the gospel, the increase of God's kingdom. What Paul says next, I think we really need to hear. 
in no way alarmed by your opponents. Church, Satan will use anything he can to divide the church body. He will use anything he can to divide families, the nation, whatever he can destroy. And dear Christian, if we're not careful, he will successfully use this virus to divide and destroy us. Jesus said a house divided cannot stand. And church, when we become alarmed or given to fear and anxiety and selfishness, we're a house divided. All the more reason Paul reminds us to stand firm in one spirit with one mind, striving to further the faith of the gospel. Now the last couple of verses are a bit hard to swallow, but I want us to hear them clearly. For to you, to me, to all of us, it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, experiencing the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. Church, it has been granted to us as Christians to suffer for Christ's sake, because when we are given the opportunity and we ensure we stand united in one spirit with one mind, we bring glory to God, and others are able to look at that and see Christ through us and glorify our Father in heaven. And this is a thing worthy of praise. So please continue to pray for each other. Please continue to pray for uh, your family. Please continue to pray for um, Pastor Steve and I and the church. And also, as Steve mentioned the other day, let's continue as a family around 7 o'clock at night to pray daily that God will not only uh, stem the tide of this virus, but also that he would use it to continue to increase his kingdom and to receive the glory. Please remember to continue to stand firm in one spirit with one mind, striving for the faith of the gospel, not at all alarmed. God is our king. Well, I just want to finish up with a couple of announcements. Don't forget, you can get all of our uh, content uh, online. You can go to our Facebook page. You can also go to our website at midwaybaptistnc.org, and you can see the most recent video or service on the homepage. Now, if you missed a video or update or announcement or something like that, you can go to midwaybaptistnc.org slash videos, which is uh, under our uh, menu links there. And there we have all of our uh, previous videos archived if you wanted to watch those. Uh, children's Church parents, you should have received an email with all the info in it necessary for accessing the Superbook uh, lessons at home, the activities and the videos. I hope and pray that this will be a wonderful resource for you as, do, as you strive to continue to be the intentional person in training up your child or children in the way they should go. And then Sunday at 945, we will be streaming the live service, so be here and be a part of that. Rather, be online and be a part of that. Uh, again, on our website or on our Facebook page. And until then, or until next time, God bless you, God keep you, we love you, we're praying for you, and we hope to be able to congregate together again soon. Have a great day.